YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel, bringing you some um, housing crisis information from Australia. Don't turn it off. Listen to this. This is a good one. If you're not from Australia, please stick around. Can't afford to buy a home? Get out of Sydney and Melbourne, says Barnaby Joyce. I'm going to say that one more time because your ears probably didn't believe what I just said. Can't afford to buy a home? Get out of Sydney and Melbourne, says Barnaby Joyce. Are you friggin' serious? You need multiple division class in a city. You think someone's gonna drive two hours to take out the trash? Two hours to go uh, clean the streets? Two hours from out of town to go to the waterfront properties? The infrastructure will crumble. Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce has a solution for Sydneyers who can't afford to buy a home. Get out of Sydney. What the hell is that supposed to mean? If you're like fourth, fifth generation proper Australian, if you're Australian proper and you can't live in your own city, in your own damn country, and your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents have been paying taxes all their lives, what, to cater? To cater to what? If you can't live, I'm talking if you're Australian proper. Declaring himself fed up with the focus on Sydney and Melbourne in the housing affordability debate, Mr. Joyce suggested homebuyers give up on water views, relocate to the regions where property is cheaper. They did that already. They've done that. And it's called Silicon Valley. They went to a desert, dry, arid place. And people went and said, you know what? Let's relocate there. Let's build a tech area. Let's get away from all this Hollywood and all this stuff. And guess what happened? It went through the roof also. You can't even afford to live in Silicon Valley. People have to drive two hours to Silicon Valley. The problem is, is when the people make a place good, everybody wants to go live there, especially people not from the country. They bring in their baggage and their problems and bring in their ways of life that end up disturbing the Australian proper. And then look what happens. So you know what? Let's go build a Silicon Valley in Australia, somewhere in some arid desert out of nowhere. Bring in the tech companies, bring in everything. And then... Once the property goes gets overvalued, let's just relocate to somewhere else and start a new city. I get annoyed when people talk about that the only house that they could buy apparently in Sydney and it's too dear. He told ABC Radio National, these are other parts of Australia I live in. One, it's called... Tamworth. Mr. Joyce was responding to yet another report showing homes in Australia's two biggest cities are among the world's least affordable. The Demographia uh, survey released on Tuesday found Sydney was the second most expensive city in the world for housing, behind only Hong Kong, Melbourne, ranked fifth, more expensive than London and San Francisco. What if how Sydneyans get why would solve the housing crisis. Then in quotations it says, houses will always get incredibly expensive. If you, can if you can see the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge, just accept that, Mr. Joyce said. Houses are much cheaper in Tamworth. Houses are much cheaper in Armalib Arma whatever. Houses are much cheaper in Tawuba. Sorry guys, I'm butchering these names. First time I'm ever reading them. Sydney's wonderful and so is Melbourne. The trouble is so many people think it's wonderful that the price of a house is incredibly expensive, but there are other parts of Australia. I didn't move out west, so I say this. If you've decided you've got the gumption in you and you want to move west, if you're going to have a very affordable house, if you say, if you really want an affordable house in Monsum, well, don't we all? But the problem is the jobs, the services, the, 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 some people need to be in the city. There's some people that need to be close to the hospital. There's some people that can't go out to these stick, stick town areas that are out in the middle of nowhere just because it has a Walmart in it. It doesn't mean you need, you got all the amenities you need. You know what I'm saying? Prime Minister Malcolm Turbinal, Turnbull, sorry, wants to Propositized housing affordability in 2017 has handed responsibility 
of the issue to young front bench newcomer Michael Sukar, who is from Melbourne. So you good, you got a local person in there. Uh, Treasurer Scott Morrison flown into London and more to learn more about how the British government has responded to the housing affordability crisis in his country. Come to Vancouver, see how much how bad it is here. Asked whether the Turbul government needed to do more on housing affordability or perhaps reconsider tax incentives such as uh, negative gearing. Mr. Joyce said government was doing other things such as promoting agriculture and decentralizing the public service and regional areas of Armadale. We do other things. So there's a picture here with million dollar views here in Australia. But you need a demographic of all wealth. You, you just, it just can't be, it just can't be wealthy people living in one city. Who's going to monitor? Who's going to, who's going to do, who's going to drive a bus? Who's going to, Who's going to fix a wall when you got a hole? Who's going to fix a pipe when it bursts? You think people are going to drive two hours out of town to come in? Man, I wouldn't even bother taking the job. If, if I got to drive two hours because some schmuck in God knows where that's got a view of some beautiful opera theater and needs to get in, and I, I don't think so. Anyways, we do other things when we suggest them. People mainly in the Labour Party fight tooth and claw to try and stop us, he told ABC Radio. NWS Premier... Gladly, but I can't even read that. Sworn into the job on Monday has also named housing affordability as his top priority. Speaking Radio National on Wednesday and said the situation was not as simple as Mr. Joyce made it appear. You know what? I'll make it simple. How's about this? Can't even barely read the names on there. Let me tell you something. Do what Vancouver did. The implemented uh, people are like, oh, stop puck, pay, stop picking on the foreign investors. It's not the foreign investors. Okay, it's not. Let's put a foreign investor tax. We put the foreign investor tax. You want to see the next story I'm going to read on my channel? This is the next story I'm going to read on my channel. BC foreign buyers tax really did yank down Vancouver home prices. Yeah. So, a lot of people in Australia are saying, oh, stop blaming the foreign investors. They have nothing to do with the price hikes. And people are always investing. No. Like I said, if you go to my other videos, you would understand when it's a free market, when you're living in a free market country, all the English speaking countries except South Africa are free market countries. Come in, whoever's got the most money, buy. If you're from here, we don't care. It's who's got the big bucks, come in. 20, 30 years ago, I'm, I know I'm saying this like a broken record, watch some of my old videos. 20, 30 years ago, when your grandparents or great grandparents went to Australia, they came with a duffel bag and 20 bucks. They managed to buy a house, put your your parents through school, and and your parents went through school and put you through school that's watching this right now and took care of you and raised you. Now it's not like that no more. You come with thirty bucks, guess what? You're gonna be you're 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 homeless and you to get off that plateau just to rent is almost next to impossible. Things have changed. It's free market countries have sold to the highest bidder. Period. Look at New Zealand. Look at Vancouver, Canada. Look at London. Look at the, the, the cities that speak English, English-speaking countries, minus the United States. The United States is really tough on immigration getting people in. And there's a lot of uh, U.S. government taking people's land, too. People like, oh, you haven't been here in a year. Oh, but we'll just take it back. You know what I'm saying? The U.S., that's why, why do you think it's so tough to immigrate to the U.S.? Why do you think you could still go to Florida and buy a house for 90 grand? A decent house in a decent area close to work. Why do you think you can go to Houston and buy a house? Arizona and buy a house? Watch some of my previous videos. I could show you guys what, like, what is going on. It's so tough to get into the U.S. because I think the U.S. just doesn't want to sell to the highest bidder. Because if they did, it would have happened a long, long time ago. Mind you, places like Silicon Valley and San Francisco, anywhere that opens anywhere in the west of the United States is very expensive because the uh, gateway to, to the Orient. It's the gateway across the Pacific. You have China, Japan, uh, uh, Vietnam. Uh, Korea and all those other countries, that's the gateway into the United States. And that part, California, uh, uh, Oregon, and uh, Washington State, very expensive states to live in. But everywhere else is pretty much, uh, 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 it's just a free-for-all everywhere else. I wanted to put that out for you guys. Re the, 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 the system needs to be restructured, period. People can't afford to buy in their own city. 
That's that's people and 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 Sydney and Melbourne. They're pretty big cities. They're not holes in the wall. They're like pretty. The demographic, the city goes way out. The district goes pretty out, pretty way out there. And you're telling me that people are not expanding west, building west. I'm saying, it's a, Australia's a big continent. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this because there was a a, a, a minister here in, in in Vancouver. Sorry, that said the same thing. Well, Vancouver's not for just the common Canadian. It's more for the wealthy. It's like. Okay, we leave. Fine, we leave. We go. We go. But the thing is, we'll build up another Silicon Valley or another city, make it techy, make it modern. And guess what happens? Then we can't afford to live there either because then all the investors come in and start buying up, buying up and, and buying out everybody that lives there. And then basically people get this big offer of big cash, then they move out and then they think they made the right thing. But in, meanwhile, down the road, they realize they made the biggest mistake of their lives. Anyways, I don't know what you guys think about this. I'm, I'm going to leave a link to the article. I'm really choked that someone would say that. Just like move out. Yeah, okay, fine. But the problem, can you guarantee? Can you guarantee if we move out and build the city from scratch, could we make it, uh, could we make rules on the city for, for and, and have it just for people living, you know, and working? You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's getting so out of place that they have to put in laws and bizarre. Do the tax thing. Put the vacant tax, like we, in Vancouver, we got the vacant tax. Uh, you got to pay 2 or 3% of the property value every year if your house is vacant. And it's got to be occupied 10 months of the year. One. Two, adds the foreign tax, uh, uh, foreign tax law. So this way, when people are shadow flipping the houses, they're just shadow flipping and they're laundering money through Australia. The best thing to do is just put a foreign tax, 12 or 15%. So if you're not uh, uh, Australian proper, you just go ahead and do the, uh, do, do the, uh, add the tax. And if, 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 the people on the radio talking about Australia saying, oh, oh stop picking on, on, on the foreign investors. They have nothing to do with it. Okay, they put the tax on like they did here. They put the tax on. They kept talk, They kept arguing that, oh, no, 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 it's a... No, 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 it's not. Stop picking on the foreign investors. It has nothing to do with them. And it says right here. Tax really did yank down Vancouver's home prices. The verdict is in. The BC foreign buyer's tax really did pull down Vancouver's home prices. Unless these guys are lying. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Implement laws in place. Protect your citizens' future. Because Australia, Portugal, I, don't, I can't say Canada, but certain countries are those countries because the people that live in them. Australia is not Australia because it, the map says, welcome to Australia. Australia is Australia because the people that live in the country are Australian. Portugal is considered Portugal because the people living inside Portugal are Portuguese. Not because the map says, oh, this is... No, the people that live there are Portuguese. Mexico is not called Mexico because, hey, let's call it Mexico. No, it's Mexico because the people living in the country are Mexican. What's going to happen when all the Australians leave? You could call it Australia, but what's it really going to become? Comment below if you know the answer. Comment below what you think. I don't know. I just hate when basic human rights, especially when people work, pay taxes, and, 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 and a doctor, a doctor in Australia can't even live in his own city. A doctor? Back in the day when we were kids, doctor was the prime, prime, prime job to get lawyers or, or big high-end. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Comment. Let me know. Bye.